All right. So, I am considering going to the White March, but I need to go take a look at what I got going on here. Which, if you're just joining me, that's not... You know, that's like the north part of the map. It's part of the uh, the expansion. Uh, White March came out a few months ago. White March Part 2 came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but I haven't done either, so, um, they are kind of like side areas. They do not, uh, you can do them pretty much any time before, I think, the end of the game. Uh, you, you reach kind of a point of no return, and then at that, then you, you just go on and, you know, whatever, but, like, up until that point. I believe you can do it as long as you have Cade Nua first. Okay, so when I was here last, we were. Huh. See, I need this note. And I'm trying to figure out. I mean, it says uh, I have a hideout in Copper Lane, and there's this place Copper Lane that has a. Um, place I like a door that I can't get into. <sighs> okay, that's yeah. Okay, that that's from White March, I believe. And this uh, Durgan's battery is well, obviously it's her, but um, uh, actually still need to go to of course. This, this place that I have it going. Uh, where is it? Is it? No. The hall of... Uh, uh, okay, that's an alley. Wait, what? In the mortared stone wall is sheltered by the eaves. The naughty green vine claims all the way up to the point do two ornate shutters seem to beckon you in. Uh, phew, uh climb the vines. But who am I sending up? Dry shook, okay. They fell over. Push, finds crumple, struggle for purchase. Bottom exhausted. Okay, grappling hook, whatever. I mean, yeah, I got keep finding them. Yeah, let's climb it. <coughs> you perch atop the window sill and steady yourself against the frame while the breeze cools your back. You detect movement inside of the house. Please your eyes adjust to the dim material you slip inside the manor. Okay, well, there you have it. Okay. S yeah. So. Nice and slow. Let's take us a quick peek around. So, we got a few things to look at. Morality. Found something. Hell yeah, you did. What is it? Oh, sucky, sucky. <sighs> okay, what do we got? I'll get it here? open. Finished. That's not bad. Show me what you got. Uh, oh god. Wait, wait, wait. Don't. Okay. Great. I mean, my guy can. I mean, 
Not all of us are on such bad terms with sleep. Oh, shut up, crybaby. Alright. Yeah, health. Why not? Save does the last you leave. Okay. Are you proud of yourself, Trap? Are you proud of yourself? Uh, right, whatever. Okay, come on. Wow. The Heart of White March is a priceless jewel known for its pale glow, named after equally famous mountain range. And so jewels like this were once believed to attract dragons. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so already. Took that one guy down. I'll add uh. the grieving mother to my Let's see what we got. Oh the hell with it. Uh. <coughs> oh, okay. I'll get it open. Finished. If secrets whisper here, I shall listen for them. Okay. Uh, these apples look too vividly crimson to be real. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Small lot picks. Okay. Yeah, I kind of don't care. Wow. Nice and slow. Servant. The old serving woman regards you with bleary eyes. Blaking your pardon, but I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to return downstairs. Visitors aren't permitted on the upper floor. I don't know. Back. Okay. Well, I mean, I feel bad, but. Stuff on you. This is the masterwork of a famous Adarian painter, Adarian. What we got? <laughs> you know, little Spef. Little Spef, get you going. Though exquisitely crafted, this love seat feels stiff and uncomfortable. Uh, I mean, we all gotta go downstairs as many of us does, so. I guess we should check this place out, oughtn't we? Traveler. Lord Raymont ho <clears throat> holds the shipping manifest in his well manicured hands. Despite his expensive clothes, he has the shallow complexion and restless air of a man who devotes all of his days and most of his nights to work. If you have business to discuss, make an appointment with my attendant. I don't have time for unexpected visitors. He snaps the pages in his hand. I am lord of this house and not prone to idle chatter. If you have no business here, I suggest you be off. He doesn't look up from his papers. That's cool. I didn't really want to be here anyway.
That happened. Um, what I meant to do was... Well, let's look at our characters. They're all going on pretty... They're a couple thousand away from level 8. So... Is it... Let's check copper line. We'll fare better if we get some sleep. This guy. This guy. And his sleep. Okay, what is this? Uh, 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 yeah. The crying's never gonna end if I don't, you know, go over here. Mother don't need no sleep. Grieving, grievous, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead so that guy will stop crying. And then I'm gonna run through these real quick because they might give me clue. see a wizard playing illusions in a town square. Fingers plucking color and sound from the air and waving scenes of beauty and fright. A crowd of onlookers gasped in tears and thralled the display. All but one boy. Standing off to the side, mouth agape. Green eyes are pale with wonder. Vision after vision playing out before him. Something inside the boy clicks. Without warning, he bolts, disappearing into the crowd. Pushing and shoving desperately. The mage finishes his show after a giant silver dragon descending through the crowd and a thousand stars exploding into nothingness. Collecting coins, he walks around the clapping crowd, bowing and nodding at each as he passes until a small sack is dropped into his hands. The boy stands for a moment before him, small and still, begs the wizard to apprentice him. He glances at the hefty bag, weighing it and the boy, carefully. Finally, he nods and flicks gently at the bag, which disappears. The boy grins. How'd you do that, he asks, but the illusionist merely winks. Okay. Mm. see a fire burning slowly on the side of a winding road unmanned. There seems to be no fuel, no wood or oil for it to consume, no hay or twigs. Despite this, it roars, crackles, wails in the wind. It takes you a moment, and you begin to notice a figure in the flames. Its shaking hands cradle a young face, molten red tears mark his skin the color of coal. The boy cowers, flame coating him as he holds to his knees to his chest. In the distance, a man approaches, faceless. He extends a hand to the frightened child, who considers it warily before taking it. The flames die down, leaving his limbs settling on his head, on his head like a medium clip. What? <clears throat> the flames die down, leaving his limbs and settling on his head like obedient pets. All tears dried, they walk together, fire and death, hand in hand. All right. So I really didn't do much for me. All we got over here, here's Roy Ninguin. Okay. Whoops ass. Right. This 
See an impressive gra gathering of wild orlins in ceremonial dress, shaded by a copse of ancient oaks. Underneath the largest oak stand two young orlons, hands clasped, eyes clear as they promise to care for and love one another in the joining of their clans. An older orlon steps forward, uh, steps towards them to speak. Beard seeming to sprout from directly underneath his eyes, he de and declares their union complete. The jubilant orlons clan carry the newly wedded couple away to their tent with snorts of laughter and crude jokes leaving the older Orlan to sit alone beneath the age-old oak. Sighs, observing the scene in the distance. He whispers a quiet benediction, glad for their gladness, and melts into the trees without another word. He has seen enough happiness for one day. Go out in the streets and see what's shaking. these guys and one of the earlier ones. I right hear <clears throat> See a man stumble, knees bleeding, clothes torn, eyes dead. His skin is damp with sweat, but he pushes onward. His back is arced. Defeat. Ed. <laughs> At his side hangs a bow. Strings limp from disuse. He trips through the undergrowth slightly, ignoring all but the sound of his own anguish. Comes across a deer, guts filled across the forest floor, still streaming, steaming in the cold night air. A stalegar watches him from above, perched on the trunk of an enormous fallen tree. It takes the man a moment to notice his danger, and he seems almost glad for it. The stalegar unravels itself from the tree, eyeing him carefully. <coughs> its distended stomach almost brushes the ground as it jumps down, and the man dives, d dives to meet it. For a moment, team, t time seems to slow as the man and beast collide. Stalgar roars, swiping at him with its claws, and soon has him pinned. Great yellow teeth and acrid breath, ready to end his intrusion. But with a wet ripping sound, instead, the agonized Stalgar is himself gutted from neck to rump. The man exhales deeply, covered in blood, ponderous. Not today, not today. That's right, that's where the jackasses live, so... I'm pretty sure I've read this guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's the guy that tricks people into... That's, that's a cat. house. I mean, that... I guess that's the one. I mean, it has to be, but... Well, it doesn't have to be, obviously. It's a ridiculous statement, but... Um... You certainly would think so. I'm missing something, so I'm yeah. gonna take Ding Dong here and stealth around. So like one of the candelabras. Or I mean sconce or whatever the hell. <coughs> the wall mounts or real breathing breathing mm. them all in here too. Following your lead. Let's take a peek.
Hey. Huh? Light of dawn. Was, yeah, yeah, it's starving. Yeah, the, you know, the old traveler and the ghost. One of my favorite, my favorite stories. Oh, how did I end up with so much stuff? I don't know. Huh? See, there you go. It's kind of like boo, I would guess. I mean, and like, uh, Adair seems like he could use a little bit of boo. Nice and quiet. There are more than a few banned books in here. Records of books borrowed and returned fill the cubby holes. Hey. Right. Welcome. If you're welcome to browse the stacks, but might you keep your voice down? This is still a temple, after all. The Grimda doesn't tolerate disorder. Should we? Uh, who's Grimda? Why, well, she's the High Archivist. She's one of the most accomplished scholars alive today. Nothing goes on here without her knowing about it. Almost nothing, anyway. She scratches behind her ear. She'd probably tread lightly around her today. Anything else? Tell me about yourself. I'm a scrivener and devotee of oil. It's my duty to look after our records and resources. Her chest swells with pride. This is a temple. Looks like a library. Her eyes go wide and round. That's because it is. Wile is a god of mysteries and answers. Encryption and decryption. Concealment and revelation. She raises her hand to the rows of shelves. Its guidance come from the understanding, the unknown, and the protection of hidden knowledge. The Hall of Revealed Mysteries was built to celebrate that. To think there's such a place in Deerwood. Incredible. I'd love a glimpse of the archives. How many secrets must sit upon these shelves? Uh, fascinating. Tell me about yourself. She throws it. Okay, whatever. Farewell. Whatever happened to the music? That's All right, then. Quiet place or something. Good day to you. Uh, an elderly dwarf surveys the stacks. Her skin looks as tough and wrinkled as a walnut. Despite her stature, she manages to look down her nose at you. You're welcome to look around, but let the priests and scriveners continue their search. She shoots an earshot figure with her glance. Wouldn't do to give them any other excuses. An animator named Nadine asked me to retrieve the theorems of Phandrum from the Ender Arc Elder Archives. 
Grimda's impressive frown deepens. Thank you for letting me know. I'll be sure to tuck that tome away from prying eyes and see that it never sets foot in here again. In the meantime, here, a token of our appreciation. Well, I guess that's good, right? Is that what we wanted? To see her barred entirely? Seems a fearsome price to pay. Knowledge dangled just out of reach makes a tempting prize for any soul. What else do you need? Uh, what are they looking for? Maybe I could help. Besides you have stroke your chin. And I could trust you to bring it back, I suppose. She scowls at the robe priest again. You certainly couldn't do any worse than this lot, anyway. Thieves made off of an ancient scroll of wild. They intend to blaspheme by selling that which should remain hidden. A secret of the hundred visions. Her wiry eyebrows arch over her spectacles. The guards caught one of them, but were overzealous in their interrogation. All they could piece together was something about a farmhouse and the road to Deerford. Track the thieves down. I don't care what you do with them, but bring back the scroll. Wow rewards the persistent seeker, and so do I. An ancient scroll of Wow. There's a fine prize. I mean, a worthy task. Uh, tell me about yourself. I'm the High Archivist of Hall of Revealed Mysteries, she calls Lyle into her fist. I'm too old and too busy to be bothered with inane questions. Even just one or two? Very well. Well, I guess that, uh... I completed that. Hey. Hmm. How do you do? Alright. You see nothing at first. Inky darkness filling your vision. The dust of eons flooding your nose. You hear a strike, and a torch gutters into flame, revealing a man without a face, and a library of books flickering in the dull orange glow. He moves to the closest shelf, sliding the torch into a socket, and gingerly pulls a black-bound book into his trembling hands. He flicks through it lovingly, caressing each page, turning to the next and the next. Finally, he finishes, placing the book in a satchel to his side and takes down the torch. He spends hours wandering, reading, collecting, <clears throat> until his satchel is as thick as he himself and half as heavy and begins to make his way back to the entrance. With a barely audible sigh, he draws two decaying doors closed and the torch is distinguished. Hey. What's up? Okay. These titles all refer to Glanfarth and math mathematics and advanced hey. geometry. The travels Errol and Levi hey. to 2662 to 268 question mark. Okay. How are we doing on the old castle front? Possibly, this painted eye seems to move whenever you turn your back. Hey. Hello. Mm, nice nord dog dog wild. <clears throat> Her smile reveals a row of crooked teeth. That's the rub, isn't it? Wild is the god of things hidden and revealed. The more of the hundred visions one sees, the more one has yet to discover. Though we often call wild he who sees and is not seen, it is neither male nor female. To, seen, uh, to assign any definitive characteristic to all is to miss another essential part of its divinity. The Hundred Visions? <clears throat> A term of reference for all's many revelations. Despite the name, they're infinite. Each epiphany leads to yet another enigma. What else do you need? I had questions about the scroll. Ask. Uh... Tell me what you know about the thieves. Very little, except that they were foolish to believe they could steal from the God of Secrets. That, and they were fleeing to a farmhouse. How should I handle the thieves? 
However you can. Kill them, rob them, leave them. It makes no difference to me. She weighs a hand and smiles grimly. I consider it one of Wilde's mysteries. What's so special about this scroll? Well, it's a god of secrets. If I told you that, I'd cheapen it, wouldn't I? She cackles. It's a parable. The kind that nourishes the inquisitive mind and poisons the foolish. I'll return with the scroll. Okay, alright, fine. Uh, you see a small crowd gathering near the entrance to a temple. This man stands against the wall, the crowd forming a single circle around him. He speaks with a calm, measured tone, his soothing voice carrying over the sounds of the surrounding city. He speaks of the world, history, the gods, and religion. He speaks of cooking, brewing, child raising, and other wives' tales. Oh, come on, can we have gone with rearing? There does not seem to be a subject he lacks at least in passing knowledge in. People ask him questions, and he answers them in turn, sometimes being detailed and in-depth, other times only giving a general answer. Regardless of what is said, all of his answers seem to hit the heart of what was asked, each person satisfied with what they've learned. People come and go from the crowd, its size growing and shrinking, but never completely dissipating. Hours pass, and he never seems to tire, sharing his knowledge with anyone who would benefit from it. The light of day winds, the group finally grows small enough that he draws everything to a close. He gathers his belongings and prepares to leave. A man approaches him, asking why he does this. He asks for no money, no food. What benefit is gained from his action? He looks at the man gathering thought, then simply tells him, Knowledge brings wisdom. That is my faith. That's cool. Gotcha. Faithy. I'll see what I can find. Let's see what's going on down here. Uptown. defenses too, right? I mean, I'm yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. 
Stop there. Where do you think you're going? This area is under the control of the Torn Bannerman. Anyone else wanders in, they're not leaving again. For starters, I've got orders to put a sword through your gut if you don't turn around and run back home. Cadnua's a fine keep. You ought to get on back, Lordling, and wait until we pay you a visit. Yeah, we'll see about that. We've got trouble over here! Well, you got trouble. You got some serious trouble. You had your chance. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> They both slumber. Oh. Not Rest up, big guy. We've got your back. Leave it. All right, Stop then. Stop there. Where do you this area is under the control of the We've got trouble. You All right. <clears throat> Actually, you know what? You had your chance. Perfect. So it's here. Okay, that's good. Get the berserker. Yes. What happens? Okay. This slows down a little bit. Let's go ahead and go. Looking good, me. That's good. That work, huh? Okay, so we'll... Yeah, these guys are tough. time yet. <laughs> the 
Sam's like not doing any damage. then Take a look at what shops we have now. Need to sell some stuff anyway. It's goofball shop. Hello! Greetings. Let's see what you got. Hmm. Okay, that's, that's cool. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah, bunch of good stuff. to get their arms buffed up at some point. This place might be new. This is spider legs, yeah, sounds like Hail Traveler. Funny. Yeah, this is a curio shop. Alright. <laughs> That's cool. So potion stuff. Okay. So we run into Bright Hollow and Rest. Get a, a bonus of some sort for the next fight. And, um, then we'll try to. We'll get 
into some action. I will go out in the wilderness or go hunt down a bounty or something. Get out of the city for a while. <clears throat> Hmm. That was, uh, that was violent. Okay. Lost, okay. Look at um, where we might find Ogre Shaman around Elm Shore. I'm sure this is where... Yeah. Did I go to the wrong? Yeah, I think I went to a side quest and that's why I got my ass kicked. However, I am gonna go take care of some business down at Magrin's Fork real quick to collect a bounty. What's up with these guys? Yeah, I just, I don't know. They, they don't seem happy.
There we go. And for the Wayfarer, <clears throat> a motley gra gathering stands at the crossroads. At first glance, the person at the head of the group seems more monster than man. Two large and curling horns emerge from the sides of his skull, forming a hardened carapace and is, that is pocked like coral. Down its center, the strange shell splits, revealing the ash gray skin of a man's face, obscured above the nose. The horns might seem a mere helmet, save that in several places you cannot tell where the flesh ends and the bone begins. From the neck down, however, this, by all appearance, is a human man, clad in fine armor of the same dark shade as his features. The man smiles, revealing long white teeth from which the gums have retracted. Despite his masked eyes, he looks unerringly in your direction. Hail, traveler, and well met. He laughs quietly. Are you enjoying the fresh air? We, he gestures to the men and women behind him, are doing much the same. What are you doing out here? See what wide wind has wrought, he sorts. Find the name of the true architect. Thousands of souls flowing out into the world. But only in the deer would. An address mother and father's coo undeterred over their sprats. And just across the sea they weep. It's worthy of a song. So you are a fellow scholar? Have you learned a great deal? Perhaps we might trade tales, and I think not. I spent some time on the Lord Chanters. Keep your songs, on moi. My, my peons are to Bareth alone, and they speak of death. You've too much life in you by far. I walked a time in Rautai, in the time of the Lover's Tide, and saw the chaos they brought. But this, this is a true cataclysm. A time of destruction. I would observe firsthand. Those storms are plagues. And plagues pale in comparison. But what are you doing on the road? <clears throat> a band of brigands such as we? I cannot imagine. It's not an inexpensive life, ours. Even in the study of calamities, one deserves a certain level of comfort, I think. Here, our talk is done. Kill, kill that one slow. I want to see the light leave him. Yeah, you may have made a mistake there, Chuckle Nuts. Huh. Let's see what happens with the AI. Prepare to strike a final blow. Camphor raises his hand. Wait! Wait! You have won the day, Mercy Traveler, I beg you! Fine. You'll spend some time in the dungeons of Cade Noir. As you wish it, then. Of course. Ah, oh, hello there. Begging your pardon, you gave me a good fright. Thought I heard something rustling through the brush. Suppose that was just you. Silly me. Don't suppose you'd have to need some supplies. Thought I'd make my way over to Madam Bridge, but I'm starting to think I'd be better off heading back to town and getting a few more folks together. Better safe than sorry, right? Say, did you hear something? Great. 
Star in the sky, thank you. I've never seen the beast so bold before. Strange times we're in. Here, yeah, take these. I'm headed back to Gilded Vale for certain. You can make better use of them. Hey. fight this time. Hi? Yes? Yeah. I shall. Now? Grave doubt the last year. No, that was not my smartest move, right? <laughs>
Hey. Hey. Your thoughts must flow deeply indeed. How may I help? Hmm? Yeah. <clears throat> kind of stuck over here. Oof. Tougher than I expected. Okay. Um, slow it down. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, I need to. Uh, yeah, I haven't turned. Yeah, yeah, I should. Ah, thick work, you're up. Actually, let me do that. Course. Okay. Hey. So. Old ground. Yeah. Aggressive. Your thoughts must flow deeply, indeed. Crowd control is good for her. Yes. I keep doing that. I mean, to click there. Damage to himself. Following your lead. Support. Summoner. Let's try summoner. Hmm? And, uh, healing sense. Uh, hey. Alright, let me. Let me try this. Also, hey. make sure this guy has. Of course. His Alright then. I do that. I make sure this guy has his sword and shield equipped. And. I'm stuck! Wow. Love. Barely. 
Mowing. Okay, well this guy... That's... I like that spell. I can really take a hit. Okay. Let's take it again. Let's see about throwing another, at least mid range heal. There. Okay, good. So, got him down to. on this guy and get it over with and then kill his friend but maybe see if I can grab a few guys in this heal okay and from here we will yeah actually that's wow that guy can really hit Oh wow, okay, he's down. That's good. I did not expect him to be That's pretty sweet. Uh, what's it got? Oh, damage reduction. That's cool. Oh, DR. Damage reduction reduction. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, oh, that's really cool. I'll have to... I'll do that. Always get that lock the Grimlaws. Awesome. Hey. It's a good call right, on then. the AI settings. I, uh, I hadn't checked them in a while. It's a really good call. direction it's kind of strange it's actually helpful since I gotta run up to this dude's place anyway uh, oh right uh, whistling in the reeds rewards 25% experience red reed one uh, what was it okay the Ixamitol Plains Oshin Lake is renowned for the beautiful flowers that grow along its banks for several weeks in every spring Local farmers harvest the flowers for a spring festival in all of the nearby villages. In the past three years, four people have gone missing during the flower collection. No one has seen the abduction take place, but people uh, in the area have reported hearing a high-pitched whistle from within the tall reeds. When the abductees are discovered days later on the shore of the lake, they appear to be happy and smiling, but, were, but unaware of the world around them. The whistle victims never recover in the state, most dying within a few weeks. Philosophers at the monastery near Zalshin Lake have advised local rulers to seek out outside help with the problem. So I'll send. Uh, Alright. Send Tom Chick. Um, I should probably do that battle one of these days. Uh, the first time, a few times I did it, I lost and just thought maybe I could get more people on my side, but I'm, I'm not sure if I can. I got the Crucible Hail Traveler. Knights, but... Alright, Slice, Riddle's dead. Oh, nice, okay. Who worked though, said, ready to hammer soon enough. Here's the bounty. Okay, that's good. Uh, okay. 
Alright. I've got to be getting kind of close to level 8 now. Uh, 27, 8, 97, yeah. So not much longer. Hmm. I don't want to try to battle again, but I don't know. All right, is this place not finished yet? Wow, okay, let's go there. Day, day and some change left. A few bonus personnel. <clears throat> I see two athletics, three constitution. It's nice. Um, three perception is pretty nice. They're all pretty good. Use a perception bonus this time. Actually, that's not a good idea. I'm gonna use athletics and constitution and try to go do the war thing. Just real quick. Let's see if it works out. If it doesn't, then you must gather. I don't know. I think it could. So I need eight points. I need to have two left. Athletics can go up uh, a point. Two. Okay. Good. Um, let's see what we got here. Mining strikes, modification of the soul. Let's try. Increases fighters' awareness while in defender's mode, granting your bonus to reward to replace as well. All offenses except deflection, defender, and more than all speed. Instant. Okay. Or a bonus knockdown. Could be nice too. Uh. Huh. 
What else the healing the most amount of health on the user? Alright. Okay. So hey. that looks like the most we're gonna get out of it now the field we're supposed to go to. Sound the horn, time to finish this, continue. Take out those battle mages, send them crystal knights. Everyone charge. I think this. I think there's a way I can do this too. <laughs> So we go in for Cade and Nua. Sound of the March Forn's horn, the little there was Crucible Knights just this year with a long graying beard is challenge to the Bleak Walker Captain and still clad formation class of Elephurus. They build heavily armored units farewell against the other, but the Crucible Knights appear to have the upper hand. Let's see, we need to deal with those battle mages. We have no allies with them. Alright, well let's charge then. Yeah! <laughs> 
I'm still thinking to get rid of the bleak walkers. Months of enemies in the air effect with Valerium confusing them. Okay. Whoa, switches the location of the caster and one ally. Let's go see double. Both caster on skin. One arcane. Let me get all that. Hmm. Oh, sure, that one sounds fun. Okay. We have any... Oh, yeah, I'll take a bonus turn while I'm spinning. Hmm. Sounds good. Especially since I don't really think I'm gonna live through this. Why not? Well, that's not bad anyway. Seven damage reduction, stolen accuracy. That one sounds cool. Stunned for four seconds is pretty good. <clears throat> and what the hell? This is it all fun, Gene? 
Let's see what's going on. Center detection. All right, I'll just do another third wall. <clears throat> yes. Hey. Hi. then okay so for the last little bit here I think what happened initially was I went to the wrong place This is where I should have gone <laughs> instead of Nut Puncher Hospital or wherever the hell I ended up there. It's not a very good hospital. You've set out for Stalwart. The White March rises up in the distance, stretching to the north and south as far as the eye can see. It beckons to you with peaks like broken fingers. The road thins to a tattered ribbon, and the shadow of the mountains falls across your path. You've barely begun your climb when the darkening sky pummels you with hailstones and turns the ground beneath you to ice. You press on. The air grows thin, and the treacherous mountain passes funnel screeching winds past your ears. A blizzard forces you to make camp for three days, huddling for safety while snow piles around your refuge. At last the weather clears, and you approach Stalwart under a crisp blue sky. There's a noise, high and sharp, coming from the village that sounds at first like another frozen gale. But when you top the rise and reach the village's wooden gates, you see what lies beyond them. That's a John Deere dealership. It's Darzir! With a whole pack of them! Whoa. We what? can take these bastards! Huh! <laughs> 
course. Look out! More of them by the fishery! survival to go up honestly so I'm gonna leave it like that though technically I could I get 12 next time so I get 5 and it goes up yeah and still 7 is enough for the 1 point um I do want this one on him as for my, my guy my mechanics, obviously. That's what I'm working on with him. So, you know, I did this veteran's recovery last time. I just don't... I don't know. It seems kind of weak. How about... Frenzy. Whoa. Yeah, why not? I'm the monk that has anger issues. This, uh, okay, the Amoa. Got the one with wait, what's this? Oh, 
Throw up ten. Seven in the skeleton's necessary, buddy. <clears throat> I mean, not that it really costs anything, so whatever, but I'm just saying. I, I really All right, then. I think there was much of a purpose to it. Uh, okay. Yeah, why not? Take burn damage. Oh, I don't like that. From the radiant spell, I like that. Yeah. More. You know, blow yourself away there. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, bonus third level still. What I want. <laughs> you know, did I actually? Yeah. So. Focus. Hmm. Uh, yeah, sure. That sounds good, at least. <clears throat> now. Now we can move on. Brave Dalton. My mind feels so Door appears to be barred from the inside. Does not budge. The graphs rest. Okay, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes? These people have locked their houses. Grave does. <laughs>
Darzir's fallen! Back to the matron, now! Who? Okay. All right, then. Hey. Wow. My mind gets my mind. How may I help? Okay. Leave it to me. second. That way we can even up the odds a bit. Uh, you know, just kind of hey. rock those dudes. You know, dude rock. I don't know. Heal up, you know, and get ready to get back in. Yeah, go ahead and run back to your matron. 
come on back, you son of a bitch. If you ever want to try again. You, you're the one, uh... Let me see this. Ren and Guild, sent for... She will want to speak with you. Her house is just up the way, next to Grief, Graf's Rest. Messed your pants, waving smoke away from his face. Katie's nice. house is burning! Hurry! Help! The hut's there. coming down! The roof of this hut is almost entirely enveloped in flames. Lighting the snow in stark orange hues. Several beams have been reduced to ember dotted husks. Through the head's hut's threshold, you can see only billowing smoke. Fire roars as it climbs the timbers. The air feels thick and hot, and the building is a maze of flames. <sighs> in there. Yeah. Either lifts over the burning threshold sign. Inside the house, the fires pit of the wall and beams with thick rolling. It's hard to see even a few feet ahead, so the occasional glimpse of growing embers. Yes, survival will wipe off a million. So. No. Moves onward through the haze, that ground shifts to blaze ground. Find the ground, the burning beams crashing down on others, pin beneath the log, push the beam away. Even reeling from the impact, Hedder is still able to heave the debris with relative ease. Hedder gets back up, a little winded from the ordeal. A sudden flesh over cinches his Hedder's arms, doesn't stop Hedder, but the pain steadily grows. Pressing forward, Hedder comes at last to a wider room. To the left is a man that starts to faint cries for help. He stands trapped behind a cart to flame. Uh. I don't want to lie unconscious when you hear some once been the roof. She's small, but the rubble trap here looks heavy. Smoke points its way. I know the right. Try to lift the rubble. Use pry bar. Fine, fine, There have one great and final effort. Edir heaves the woman, blasts the rubble, clear of the woman. Feeling confident, the woman is free of the rubble and now can be moved. Turn away to help the man. Drops, uh, uh, approaches the other victim. Unbearable editor will collapse soon. Try to reach for the man through the flames. Turn away to help the woman. Oh shit. Like some time later, I finally agreed, Mother's time he dragged editor to say. Aww. They're gone. Both of them. Okay, so, you know, I'm gonna hit the deck and reload here in a second, but... Okay, but first... Survival. So what would have happened? Fallen! 
back to the matron now. No. Katie's house is burning. All right then. Hurry, just there's help. In the there. hut's coming down. Just okay. So. Okay, so I just have to see. Huh. Compress is on. It filter the constitution through the haze of heat and soot. The house grounds and shifts. Pop up the beam. Okay. Alright. Use the pry bar like we did last time. Turn away to help the man. Oh crap. Oh man. They're gone. Both of them. <laughs> okay. That was kind of a dick move. I guess I could have at least saved one. <laughs> oh, that was mean. Okay. Let me see if that's something I can... I can learn. Hurry! They're Following your lead. This place feels hollow. More memory than substance. Right away. Hmm. Hey. Um. Well, let me see. Well, I'm gonna send my ass in this time. Why not? You know? Help! The hut's coming down! I have, uh, you know, high constitution. Uh, high dexterity. Okay, helpful woman. Continue. Uh... Katie, thank the gods you saved her. It's quite possible I can get them both, so maybe if I send in the magician. kind of think he would make it. Uh, yes? Let's see what you, what you got in this building, son. Stupid shit. Well, then she'll fog. I shot. Now, let me see if I can actually. Oh, wait, huh? Yes. Hurry! They're both in there! Okay. I'm a 
inventory is what I wanted. Right click. Get rid of stupidness. With that stupidness. Indeed. <sighs> At least it's not Gilded Vale. So I guess really the I can save one of them, so Hurry, they're both in there. Hard living in a place like this. It's Help, a wonder the anybody stayed down. at all. <clears throat> Thank the gods you that. saved her. Uh, at least she got Katie up when you did. It's for a little girl there. Who looked like he used a drink, takes over to Harifrix and have one on me. He flips you a couple of flat car bones. He's probably not feeling the best right now. Two middle-aged women and a younger man locked in an argument. Both wear clothes, streaks with blood and dirt. And the young man turns to the woman a fresh cut visible below his eye. They've destroyed the stockade, Mother! It's... Enough. They're gone. She holds up a hand which is missing the final joint of the ring finger. But it's her voice, sharp and steely, that silences this young man. As he glowers at his toes, she turns to you with dark circles in her eyes and a smile pulled taut across her thin lips. The deliverer of Cad Nua. Thank you for making the journey. Abida knows it's a long one. <sighs> well, I'm sure you wagered on a more civilized welcome. Still, we're much obliged for your capable intervention. She shoots the young man a brief but stern glare. He pulls a knife from under his belt and apple from his pocket and sets to work. That's fine of you to say so, though I'm hoping your strengths lie more with arms than words. He folds the map in her hand with a quick and merciless pinch. Stalwart isn't much more than a grease stain on a map. 
What roads we've got in the White March are basically tracks in the snow. And for every traitor or adventurer that comes through, three of our own leave for good. But it weren't always so. There was a time when kings and queens sent their firstborn to these mountains, when the White March was the envy of empires. Her eyes shine for an instant. She looks like a much younger woman. How the mighty have fallen. What an era that must have been for a White March. The Pargrin Dwarves transformed the White March once. We could bring some of that greatness back to Stalwart. But we need the White Forge. She raises the map, taps a spot in the middle of a white and gray expanse. Never heard of it. Of course. In over 200 years since anyone's felt so much as a summery breeze near it. She smoothed the crease map. I'm hoping you can do something about that. She ignores the young man who shakes his head at the crackling logs. How so? We've been trying to breach Durgan's battery for over a year now. Problem is, the other expeditions can't so much as dent the front door. She rubs at her fatigue shadowed eyes. <clears throat> Why the sudden interest in the White Forge? We're an old mining town. Or we were until the Adirans pulled out and left us with a half-dug mine shaft and something resembling an inn. She thumps the sturdy wooden wall with her fist. Since then, it's been a steady decline. You've seen the roads. Isn't much we can produce that the Valians can't ship cheaper. But the White Forge... Well... If we could fire it up again and start producing Durgan steel, or something close to it, it wouldn't matter if we're in the White March or the Living Lands. Business would come. She folds her arms and gives you a stiff nod. The young man says nothing, but he tosses a sliver of apple peel into the fireplace. Tell me about these other expeditions. A dozen different groups have come through at our request, and several more besides. Been hoping that one of them could clear the way through Durgan's battery. But young or old, green or seasoned, it don't seem to matter. They cast their spells, chisel at the door, and search the grounds until they've worn new treads into the old stone. The lucky ones eventually go home. Plenty more find themselves on the wrong side of a blizzard, or an ogre raiding party. And that's why you need my help. That's the long and short of it. We're laborers and fisherfolk, not adventurers. But Durgan Steel could put Stalwart on the map again. Open up the mines. Bring in new business. We just need the White Forge. She thumps the desk with her fist. Why is Durgan still so special? Because you can shave stone with it. Cleave cast iron in two. <clears throat> and the stuff's as rare as it is remarkable. In her enthusiasm, Renegild shifts on the balls of her feet. She props one bent arm on the other, pointing distractedly toward the eaves of the house. If you had a suit of armor made out of that, but people get tired of trying to stab you after a while and just give up. If we could make something even half as good, we'd have a market at our doorstep and work enough for all of Stalwart. For a split second, her gaze flickers to Aldrich. How's it no one's gotten into Durgan's battery yet? <laughs> Where should I start? Ogres, blizzards, or sheer damned inaccessibility? She ticks the items off on her fingers. It ain't for lack of trying, I'll tell you that much. Got untold riches in Durgan's steel lying just inside... And never mind the White Forge itself. The Adirans who first settled Stalwart tried to crack it. So did the Valians, and every other cocky adventurer with more metal than sense. She folds her arm, shaking her head at the pitted floorboard. But the place has a funny way of sealing itself up. Front door stays shut, the tower entrances are clogged with rubble, and it's been impossible to blast a way in. Renan Guild trails off, and for a moment... The room is silent, but, the pop, but for the popping and cracking of the fire. What happened to Durgan's battery? It don't bear dwelling on. There's too many superstitions about that place as it is. She waves her mangled hand in a broad crescent, averting her gaze. Killed each other off, or so the old books say. He glares at Renan Guild through hooded eyes. Plenty of tales to go around, but none of them open the battery. And the last thing people need is another reason to fear the place. Kith do enjoy their ghost stories, though the Glenfarthens take theirs very seriously. Whatever it was, the other Pargrin dwarven settlements in the White March, Bone Picker, the Hawk, and the rest, emptied out not long after, moved to gentler, greener lands. Had the right idea, if you ask me. I don't see why you need the White Forge to make good steel. 
Finally, someone talking sense. He raises his knife and half-peeled apple to the fire in a dramatic gesture of exasperation. Durgan steel wasn't just good. It was some of the best. We need the best if we're going to keep Stalwart alive. She glares at Aldrich, even while she speaks to you. No one alive today has seen the White Forge, but the old stories tell that it was powerful, glowed white-hot and gave off a steady, even heat, unlike any other furnace. Let better-schooled folk puzzle over how the thing was built. I just want to see it put to use. Tell me about the Pargan dwarves. Pargrin's a word in their language. Means traveler. They've been wanderers for generations, but I couldn't tell you much more. All right, any idea of where I should begin? The battery's up the mountain to the north. A good hike away. She jerks her head in the direction of the slope behind the house. Near Galvino's place, huh? Aldrich says in a breezy tone, but Ren and Guild feel suddenly silent, fall suddenly silent, consternation hardening, hardening in the lines in her face. He smiles and draws his knife across the apple again. So it is. Though I was going to suggest dealing with that ogre camp before anything. She compresses her thin lips into a frown. Mestre Galvino, as the old crosspatch prefers it, lives by himself and keeps the wilder and beasts at bay through sheer foulness of his temper. She means to say he's a skilled smith and animancer, who's lived in the shadow of Durgan's battery for over a decade. He looks over his shoulder at you and Renningill. And by Enamancy's flimsy standard, that makes him an expert, does it? He folds his arms. And he butters his bread on both sides and fits his left shoe before his right. But that's neither here nor there. She crosses her arm and crumples the page in one tightening fist. I see. Ain't nobody here fond of the man, but he's a clever hand and a quick study. It's a fool who thinks he stayed so close to the battery without figuring something about it. You said as much to the last party, and we haven't seen hide nor hair of him since. Maybe they didn't run afoul of Baragon's ogres after all. She raises a gray eyebrow at him. Holdrick shrugs and turns back to the fire. Just watch your step. Galvino's place is a ways east of the battery, and folk who pass it bring unsettling tales. Tell me about the ogre camps. Belongs to flames that whisper. Matron Baragon's clan. Hunters tell me they've been active of late. Hunting elk and otherwise minding their own damn business. He pops an apple wedge and into his mouth and chews it aggressively. Minding their own business. Never mind the latest expedition's disappearance or the broken stockade. She pinches the bridge for nose, squinting. I'm saying we shouldn't agitate him further. He makes a toss another slice of peel into the fire, but he fumbles and drops his knife. He bends to pick it up, cursing. What does this matron have to do with anything? The brawl outside was just the latest patch of trouble. The ogre clans are getting bolder and we'll all sleep easier knowing they aren't circling our walls. Also, Baragons like to have whatever the last expedition found. Rumor has it they disappeared near her turf. She crosses her arms and looks over to Aldrich. Killing a matron will only make our problems worse. The way to approach Baragon is with your hands held high. You've made your point, Aldrich. Our guest has a soft heart, not a soft head. Good. Before you leave town, stop by the grave's rest. Most visitors to Stalward spend some time there, so Hafrik and his patrons may be able to give you the lay of the land. Don't know about you, but I'm parched all of a sudden. Actually, I want to ask you about something. What's on your mind? <clears throat> Can you tell me anything about the last expedition that went to Durgan's battery? They didn't volunteer much. And I knew better than to ask. She scratches her jaw, frowning. I've seen all types charging through here. Professional companies with shiny new equipment as brazen as you please. And hopeless runs with nothing but tattered leathers. But these folk, I don't know what they were after. And the way they looked at you made you feel cold all over. She shakes her head as if just lodging a bad dream. Wish I could tell you more. Perhaps we'll find more in the battery itself, yes. He nods at you with a guarded look. What's on your mind? Uh, I want to know more about Star. Adir founded us back in their colonial days to supply ore to the Empire. Saw a fair bit of traffic from both sides of the White March then. She rubs the number for shortened ring finger. But after the Deerwood claimed independence, Defiance Bay found cheaper places to get ore. 
Didn't have much reason to maintain our supply routes. Isn't Stalwart part of the deal? Officially. But with the state the roads are in, you wouldn't guess it. Tell me some of the more important places around town. Here in the center? Let's see. The Graves Rest is next door. Hafrick can set you up with a room and a hot meal there. Mm -hmm. The fishery's just on the edge of the lake, and the Temple of Andra is next to it. No one keeps a secret like Lavda. Or so I'm told. A few folk live in this part of town, too. Seemed a lot safer before the ogres broke through the western gate. Mm, seems like, yeah. Thiersch lives next to the old mine shaft. And Tana, the old mine overseer, is next door to me. She jerks her thumb toward the wall. What do you do here? I'm the mayor. Or so I'm reminded every time there's a game shortage, ogre attack, or a neighborly dispute. I'm a builder by trade, though. Traveled all over Air Glonfoth and the Deerwood in my younger days, but ended up back here anyway. She gave you a vague smile that's gone as quickly as it appears. Let's talk about something. What's on your mind? Questions about Jurgen's battery and the white force. The Pargrin dwarves guarded it like a mother bear. It's a what? What's on your mind? All right. <clears throat> hey. Of course. Been looking everywhere for you. Don't see the harm. Building's thirsty work. A man is sweating despite the cold. He opens his mouth to speak, but all that comes out is a loud hacking cough. He bends forward, bracing his hand on his thighs while he heaves and gas. The lengthy duration hears his fingers still panting. All Hefric's fault. Damn fool sent me. The other side of town. Looking for you. As he stands, last he stands again, he wipes his drinking bottle the back of his hand and then offers at hand and greet you. Shake it. Pleasure to meet you. I'm the uh, captain of the militia around here. Really? I didn't see you during the ogre attack. See, I was uh, guarding the Grey's Rest. Someone had to make sure those ogres didn't burn it down like they did Katie's house. Damn shame that. He frowns and shakes his head solemnly. I wanted to catch you before you went running off into oil. See, there's a few dangerous folk you might be on the lookout for. Plus, you're heading out to Longwatch Falls, so I thought you might could pick up a thermal pearl for me. He looks away and tests the toe of his boot into the snow. You want me to find a thermal pearl for you? Thing, I already found it. I just need someone else to go out and get it. Saw it in the hot springs up near Longwatch Falls. Well, I grabbed it myself. That's when I looked around and saw the Lagrapath. Must have been 50 of them. He spreads his arms wide. But I thought, but I started to wonder what's the rest of Stalwart do without me. So I ran for the sake of the village, of course. What is a thermal pearl, anyway? They form in the hot springs. Something to do with all the minerals in the water. Smell kind of funny, but they're full of minerals. Just have to crumble them into a pint. He grins. He notices his gums are bleeding. What are you talking about? Just trying to keep my teeth as long as I can. This game of fish diet isn't. That ain't easy on anyone. Said the pearls in one of the thermals. It shouldn't be. Uh, okay. No more about Launch Falls. It's east of Stalwart. Got some nice views of the valley, but most folk avoid it these days. Plenty of wilder nearby, and it only takes a few inches of snow to block the pass. If you're headed out that way, I suggest talking to Thrisk. He might have something to help you deal with the leg of Fath. That's all I need to know. You said something about dangerous folk in the wilderness? We get our share of crazies out here. Most of them aren't even from the village. He laughs at his own joke. The latest groups I'd heard were of the Gleaming Society and Sisterhood of the Slaked Skull. But Ren and Guild set aside some bounty money to see that these troublemakers are taken care of. You bring me the heads of the leaders and I'll give you the payment. I want to know about the Gleaming Society. Crazy pack of radicals that want to topple government and kill the wealthy. Makes a war defiance look like a good fight. Duke Avar and the region of uh, Red Ceres both declared them illegal, which is probably the only thing those two would agree on. Anyway, check Longwatch Falls East. That's where they were last seen. Who leads the Sisterhood of the Slyke Skull? That'll be Mezla. All of the members of the sisterhood worship Barris by sending as many folk back to the wheel as they can. He shivers. 
They've been poking around Durgan's battery. A well only knows why. But you can understand why no one around here is pleased to hear about it. Passed through town recently. Didn't stay long. They stopped at the temple of Andra. You might see if Lafta knows something. If you come across them, be careful. They are unpredictable. Farewell. Hey. Of course. Bereth's wheel of fire. Owena! Go check on that Orlin. Make sure he don't steal nothing. Never seen such a bloodbath. Feels like we got half the town's survivors in here just drinking to forget it. The dwarf surveys the crowd, his expression sober despite the half empty flagon by his hand. He shakes his head and looks to you, remembering himself. But you must be looking for some refreshment, too, after the way you handled them ogres. Or perhaps a room. Say the word and I'll give that shifty little Orlan the boot. <laughs> he nods at you with gruff camaraderie. What Orlan? Showed up a few days ago. Sticks his nose out of the back room just long enough to empty his chamber pot. He squints towards the hall as if daring the Orlan to show himself. Up to no good, I tell you. I'd like nothing more than to see him gone, but I don't want to ruckus over it. I could talk to him. Don't hurt him or anything. I just want him to leave peacefully. Given your history, I thought I'd be clear on that point. He gives you a meaningful look. Back to warm your hands, eh? What can I do for you? Uh, Top around. quality bear pelts on every bed. You won't be disappointed. I mean, I can go ahead and drop some of this crap, I guess. Whatever. Do, 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 do. Oh boy. That rocked in the hand zone. Who wants to talk to me? Okay. Alright, everybody. Thank you for watching tonight. I am going to go ahead and call it here. I need to go ahead and hit the sack. So thank you for uh, joining me, and uh, I will be back tomorrow and I uh, hope to see you then as well.